In this video, I am going to provide you with a few construction methods you can use to form a step-down footing on the side of a hillside. However, before I do that, I want to start with a regular foundation, raised foundation, couple of stem walls here, and how it's formed. So let's go ahead and remove the concrete and then take a look at the forms. And I'm going to assume that most of you watching this video know that the top of the forms around the entire perimeter need to be level. And for those of you wondering just why in the heck I'm starting with something like this, it's just to break it down and see if I can make it a little easier for those of you who might be having a difficult time figuring out where you're going to start. And as we can see here for our 20 foot by 20 foot building, if you have a five degree slope, you might not need to step the footings down. However, if we double the slope to 10 degrees, and we think we can save a few dollars on the concrete, then we might want to step the footing down. So again, level all the way across. The forms on something like this are going to need to be level and you're probably going to start from a point at either end, and that would either be this side or this side. However, you can start laying out the foundation from this side, depending upon your project and the property. And in our example, we are going to start from this side here and work our way towards the front. And that would look something like this if we were going to step it down once in the middle in order to reduce this amount of concrete and replace it with wood framed walls to create a level floor. And here you can see where we took the front section or the front form boards and just simply lowered it to where the bottom of the form touches the ground. So here we have stepped down the front area. And here's what it would look like on the foundation. And of course, this step down only has one section where we're stepping down. And the total height that we're stepping down is one foot nine inches. However, if we only step this down once, we're still going to be pouring a lot of concrete that we might not need to. And like I said, you can either start from the top or the bottom. And if you are going to start from the bottom, you will basically be reverse engineering the construction methods and the process that I will be going through in the videos. So we are going to start by creating a level straight upper form board that will provide us with the exact location of the front of the building. And once we have it firmly secured, everything is staked off and we know for a fact it's straight and level, we can go ahead and get started on our level guide boards. And even though I'm going to be using smaller lumber, if you have access to larger lumber, then feel free to use it. Our building is going to be 20 foot long. If you have a 22 foot long 2x4, two 2x6, two that's straight, then I would suggest using that instead of piecing this together like we're going to do here. So in order to create a guide board that is not going to be in our way, I would suggest coming in about two or three feet and then squaring the guide board to the front form. And a framing square might provide you with an excellent place to start. So you can just simply grab the framing square and line it up like this. And then of course I do have other videos on how to square something. And I will put links to those in the video comment area. So again, our guide board is going to need to be level and square and out of our way. For example, if we put it at the edge of the building, it could be in the way of our form boards. However, if you don't think it's going to be in the way, feel free to put it wherever you want it to be. And of course, after we have this one firmly secured and level and square, we can add the next piece along with any braces or screws or nails that we are going to use to prevent it from moving. So after you've secured everything and checked it for square, you can measure the length of the building. For example, ours is going to be 20 foot. We're going to measure 20 foot from the inside of this form board to the inside of the form board on the other side. 
and make sure that you put an X on whatever side you need or write on it, write right here. Just grab a pencil and write, this is the side we're going to put the form on. And do that throughout the rest of the project. If you make one simple mistake like this, to where you locate something on the wrong side and then start pulling measurements from it, then you're going to be tearing stuff apart and putting it back together. And in some instances, that could be a lot of hours. Next up, let's install a vertical board here. And this is going to need to be plumb or vertically level in both directions. So put the level on this side and then put it on the face of the stake also because we're going to be pulling measurements from it to locate the end form boards. And with that said, let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we have here so far. And if you are following my example here and you staggered the board, you connected this one together and you are not using a solid piece of wood for your guide board, then it would probably be a pretty good idea to nail a block on the side of your guide board so that everything lines up here. This is something else that could goof you up. So make sure that you're using the same line and it's continuing straight through. And if the building is less than 20 feet long and you can get 20 foot long lumber, then you might want to get it to use it for your guide board so that you don't end up with this problem. Next up, let's go ahead and grab the level and then plumb down or level down so that we can make a mark on the form to use as a marker so that we can locate the end of the form boards. And to do that, we're simply going to measure over 16 feet. Now you can measure all the way over to the end instead of doing it this way. But in this example, we're going to use 16 feet as a way of centering everything. And of course, we are going to do the same on the other side. And these are the points we're going to use to double check everything by cross measuring and fine tuning everything here. So we're simply going to measure from the inside of the form to the inside of the form. And we're going to do that on both sides. And then after that, we are going to measure from the point here to the point here and from this point to this point here in order to make sure everything is square. So again, from the inside point here to the inside point here and on the other side, inside point and the inside point here. So you got a good idea where we're measuring from. And if everything is right on the money, then you're going to have a square building. And I say that, but again, if these boards are not perfectly level, then these measurements could be off a little bit. And after we have figured out which lines we are going to use, we can go ahead and measure over to the end of our form boards on both sides to locate the end form boards. And of course, we do the same thing over here. If you remember earlier in the video, we measured from here to here at two feet and then attached our guide board. And then, of course, we would need to transfer this measurement also. And this is where we can't get messed up. we got to remember what side we're coming off of. So take the time to double check all of these measurements and the locations here. And to calculate the measurement, we are going to be stepping down the concrete forms. We can divide that number, which we're going to be stepping down four times, into 3 foot 6 and 5 16. So again, we're coming off of the top of the form, which is going to be the bottom of our guide board, and measuring to the top of the form. And then once we have that measurement, we can start setting our form boards. Now keep in mind that the length of these boards can be a little bit longer or shorter if needed. And if you have a measurement that might be off a little bit, then you could always have that at the bottom. So here we're going to have 10 and a half, 10 and a half, 10 and a half, and then 10 and 13 sixteenths instead of 10 and an eighth, 10 and an eighth, 10 and an eighth, and maybe 10 and a quarter. So again, the lengths can vary and the difference in height can vary also just as long as it all adds up to the same number. So here we have five feet from the inside and then a 10 and a half inch drop. Now I went ahead and I ripped the boards down to 10 and a half inches to make it easier in our example. 
Now you don't have to do that because you could always use two by tens that were going to be nine and a half inches and then adjust the last one here if that's going to make it easier on your project. And I hope I'm not confusing anyone here because sometimes you might have shear panel or some type of structural details that will require some of these boards to be longer and smaller. And here's an example of what I'm talking about if I'm going to use a couple of two by twelves. I'm going to use a 2 by 12 here that's 11 and a half inches tall and then use them on the next two and on the last board I will make it a little shorter. And I would imagine that this is what most concrete form workers are going to do to make their job a little easier. And with that done we can finish forming and this might make a little more sense because we're running the boards through here instead of ripping them down or cutting notches in them or whatever it would take to make this 10 and a half inches. And even though we can leave this form board off and stop the footing back here, I'm going to finish this off by raising this up and only having three step downs instead of four. Again, we can have four step downs and then this would step down about here and then you would have a wall that would sit on top of this footing and then a wall that would be a different height sitting on on top of this one, this one, and this one. So again, in my effort to provide you with a few more examples in one video, we're going to finish it off like this. And here's what it would look like after we finished forming it. Of course, you'd still have to drive all of your stakes in and install all of your bracing. And hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, if you have anything in the video that doesn't make any sense, then feel free to leave any questions you have in the video comment area or email them to me and I will answer them as soon as possible.